If your YouTube algorithm is anything like mine, recently over the last couple of years you've seen an influx of these prophetic ministry videos. And a lot of times these videos are something about a, a word for the new year or a word for your life. And something that I have prevalently seen in the midst of these things is something that I'm directly wanting to address today. And that's videos in this group that say God told me or God said, or God told me to tell you, or the Holy Spirit is saying something to you. I even saw one person who said she was, quote, getting a download from the Holy Spirit. And so what I wanna to do today is I wanna to touch on some reasons why this is incredibly dangerous to say, God told me, or God told me to tell you, or God said to me. A quick disclaimer before I jump in here, this is not a video about the gift of prophecy in general. This is gonna be specifically talking about anybody who is claiming to speak for the Lord or claiming to have a message directly from God. If you have any questions or you're, uh, you know, you're, you're interested in learning more about the gift of prophecy, I did an interview with Michael Miller from Remnant Radio uh, a couple months back or a month or two back, and he gives his, uh, his take on what he believes the Bible is saying about the gift of prophecy. So I'll try to link that video down below and definitely check that out if you have any questions. So I want to run through some reasons why I believe this is dangerous and potentially an alternative to this that I think could be more honoring to God. The first reason why we need to stop doing this is because God's name should not be taken in vain. Exodus 27 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. I think oftentimes when we hear of, of taking God's name in vain or we hear not to do that, we often think of it um, saying it in conjunction with a curse word or saying OMG. But I think that, that trying to purport that God is saying something when in fact he might not be or trying to, to claim to speak for him or putting his name out there to maybe try to gain uh, you know, reputation or try to grow our ministries or increase our YouTube presence, I think that is as egregious as any other form of taking the Lord's name in vain. And in this verse, we see the Lord will not hold him guiltless who does this. So there's a stark warning for those who would try to use his name to further themselves. And and even if people believe that that what they are hearing is directly from the Lord and it is for somebody else, it's incredibly risky to say God told me. I think that to have 100% confidence in this is is foolish and is is risky and is not worth the risk of of saying it in that way. And I'll get to this as we continue on. So the second point is it's dangerous because those who are new in the faith might receive this without testing it. So if you say God told me that XYZ this person instead of taking it to scripture, as as we should, you know, in uh, 1 John 4, 1, it says, test the spirits, right? So we're supposed to test every every prophecy that, that we get or that we see. We're supposed to test it to see if it actually is from God. And we do that by taking it to scripture to see what scripture says about it. And if it aligns with the word of God, then maybe it's something that we take and we consider and we pray about. If it doesn't align with it, we know that we can immediately throw it away. But somebody who is maybe new to the faith, they won't know to do that. So for example, I was I saw a video of somebody on YouTube that had a a video about like, God told me that this is going to be a season of, of like leaving basically, or like this is a, a time to leave. And in the video, they're basically saying, God is telling me right now that you need to leave your situation. And so there was a comment underneath that video that said, I've been wanting to quit my job for a while and make, uh, make jewelry and sell it online, essentially. Um, they said, make candles and jewelry and sell it online. And they said, this is my confirmation from God that that's what I'm supposed to do. So I think that, that that is where it could potentially, practically speaking, real world speaking, that's where it can get dangerous. Obviously, one, we're, we're saying that God said something that he maybe and probably didn't say for the thousands and thousands of people that are watching this video on YouTube. And two, now somebody's real world you know their 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 job is being impacted in this and in this we're seeing somebody who already wanted to leave their job and now they're just essentially confirmation bias is is coming to you know to the to the front here because they wanted to leave their job and they're they believe that now they've received a direct word from god because you've spoken this to them through the internet to tell them they not only should leave their job but that god is commanding them to do so but the comment about the lady who was saying that she was going to quit her job and make candles and jewelry and sell it online because she was tired of her job and and she received a you know word from the lord that she was supposed to do that maybe that's not what she was supposed to do right maybe she was supposed to stay in her job and be a light in a dark office maybe she was supposed to proclaim the gospel and and live out her her testimony her faith that that people around her would be able to see that and that god would be glorified but now she is removing herself from that situation 
because she believes that it's what God tells her to do um, or what God is telling her to do in the situation. So that's where I think that the, the abuse again could come in. When you say God told me, you are claiming to speak uh, infallibly. You are claiming to speak with 100% accuracy and certainty. And that really goes right into the third point. So prophets can sometimes get it wrong, but God won't. I think even probably the best of, of prophets, uh, you know, if we were to, to use that language for today, I think they would they would not say that they have been 100% accurate because as the saying goes, the best of men are men at best. And so sometimes we can think that we're feeling something, we're feeling an inclination or a pull towards something. But in fact, that's not actually coming from God and maybe it's coming from us. Jeremiah talks about how the heart is, um, is deceitful above all else and desperately sick. Who can know it? So there are going to be times where we are feeling like we should do something, but it's not from God. It's from our own heart leading us to do that thing. And with the benefit of hindsight, we're able to see that that thing was actually not from God. So if we say, I have a word from the Lord, or God is telling me for you to do this, or God is saying this to you in this season right now, then we are essentially claiming to speak infallibly. We're saying that we're no longer speaking. It is no longer us, fallible man speaking, but it is God speaking. And now we're saying that this is going to 100% come to pass. And with so many of these prophetic words, prophetic words for the new year, prophetic words for the season, when they're saying God said this, so many times and more times than not, they don't come to pass. And there's a couple scriptures that point out how that's such a big deal. And that's such a huge issue. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not fulfill it? When we say that God is saying something and that thing does not come to pass, we are making God out to be a liar. Whether or not we want to admit that, whether or not we want to think about it that way, that is the reality of the situation. If I say God is saying that if you leave this job and do this, prosperity is coming for you. And in fact, you leave your job and maybe everything collapses then I have now made God out to be a liar when in fact God never said that. It was me speaking presumptuously. And there will be punishment for that. Um, and there will be consequence for that. Because God does care greatly about his name. Ezekiel 39, 7 says, And my holy name I will make known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let my holy name be profaned anymore. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. So there is great consequence to speaking presumptuously on behalf of God to say, God told me, or God told me to tell you, there's great consequence in that because we are directly putting God's name on the line. I believe that an alternative to this would be instead of saying God told me, I think that a way that could be a lot more edifying and encouraging to everyone and maybe a way that would lead to less consequence and less heartache and less pain is to say something like, I feel like I'm supposed to tell you or something like I could be completely off about this, but I think it's all about approaching this with humility. It's all about approaching this with understanding that you are fallible that you can and do often make mistakes and that there are going to be things that you say that you feel are things from the lord that are not in fact of god but maybe came from yourself even if you're well-meaning in in putting those things forth so if we're going to say god told me let's make sure that we are quoting directly from scripture directly from the word of god that's the only time that we should say god told me is when we're reading from the word of the lord because god told me don't take his name in vain